That's it, man. Game over, man. It's game over. No tears, please. It's a waste of good suffering. Fairly well learned here. <laughs> Welcome to MOTN Random Select. This is Masters of the Nerdiverse presents Random Select, where we pit pop culture's most prominent pugilists against each other until only one survives. I'm, of course, your host, Mike G. And back on this round two, Rendezvous is Winter Trash Monk the Thizzard. Trash Monk the Third. That was a wind up. And of course, the big brain himself, Brian. What's going on? When you say the word pugilist, I think that we need to do a Young Guns introspective, man. <laughs> introspective. One and two. Freaking A. That sounds great. <laughs> young Guns. Pugilist. Anyway. With, with, uh, is that Emilio Estevez? Emilio Estevez, man. Emilio Estevez! Emilio Oh, no. Oh, no. Dude, I think that'd be great. Anyway, how you doing? Thanks for having me. You doing? Different day, future. <laughs> I'm seeing into the future. This man has, has mastered clairvoyance. Doug. It's funny. Now, you, have you seen uh, Nosferatu 2? Where he comes back in Paul Yeah, Corp? man. Yeah. Nos back with a bite. Dude, it, that's it's a movie. called uh, Nosferatu Returns, isn't it? Dude, it's called, no, it's called Nosferatu 2. It is a number two, though. Is it? Nah, that's free. It's about future Introducing vampires. Introducing Isaac Hayes as Nosferatu. It has a. It has. Oh a, no! I see what you're saying. Oh my god! It, Cl- Cliff Eastwood's son stars in it. <laughs> he, oh my goodness! He oh. plays. He plays Neo Van Helsing. Big fan of Zachary Quinto. The name is Neo. That's Zachary Quinto <laughs> wouldn't be a bad Dracula, would he? No, not at all, man. Not at all. And also, just never mind. Moving on. Moving on, man. I'm so about this... to get us all off topic. All off topic. You know, that's all right. We'll steer you back with the tractor beam, Doug. Uh, we're talking about the yucks today. We're doing a random select of nothing but comedies. Uh, we're pitting eight comedies against each other head to head, discussing their flaws, discussing their greatness. And actually making a decision on which is the quote unquote better film. Uh, we have two heavy hitters today for very different reasons. <laughs> it's kind of funny how, hence it being random, everything kind of shakes down. And speaking of shaking, I am anticipating the conversation with Brian and Winter about 1999's own Office Space. Office Space. Directed by Office Mike Judge. Space. Oh, Mike Judge. Sh- Dude, I was just watching King of the Hill last night. I freaking love King. Bobby, Bobby, <laughs> that boy ain't right. What's your that favorite boy, character from from the King? You know what? Over time, it's just grown to be Hank, man. Like yeah. Hank is the reason I come to watch that show because there's something endearing about Hank, and uh-huh. there's also something that's not right about Hank. And you know, that's a very well done show. Not every episode hits, but yeah. but. It's it's dry comedy to the nth degree, which, dude, I'm here for. Dude. If it's animation. Mm-hmm. Who's yours, Winner? Just while we're thinking uh, about it. Uh, Grandpa or Bobby? <laughs> Grandpa. Cotton. Cotton, Cotton yes. Doug. Yes. They took my took shins. My knees. They took yeah, my who, shins who took, in Vietnam. Who took his knees? What, what, do you, what would he say about Yeah, that? never mind. Winter, never mind, Winter. 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 We're, we're going to leave all that alone, Winter. Who you think you made, man? Winter, <laughs> wait, Winter Please, Wet bro. Blanket the Third. Uh, yeah, well, I, I this, this is the, this is the guy you... trying to uh, launch MOTN politics. Oh, <laughs> well, Mike, oh. Mike was using it all the... Never mind. I can't even say it. Oh, we're, I like the lore that I'm just a political scumbag. I'll work with that. <laughs> to, to answer you, to answer the question, it's always Boonhauer. Boonhauer rules. Oh, I like he's Boonhauer. A, he's, a, a, he's, a, I, he's an enigma wrapped in a vest, that guy. I'm not going to spoil it in case just no one has seen it because it's obscure enough that I'm sure people haven't seen it. But um, I liked how they ended it with Boom Power. That super. Actually, it makes super sense, didn't like, it? 
That's awesome. Spoiler. Spoiler. <laughs> we didn't say <laughs> anything. Uh, is Mike Judge well, a genius? Yeah. He did end. Right. <laughs> Dead end. No. How but dare it's on you. Adult Swim every night. It's it's not like <laughs> Futurama, which they've brought brought back what like three times, and I think it might be coming back for a fourth. I thought I was hearing a rumor about. It's so. literally uh, Rambo screaming, "Nothing is over," and he just <laughs> <laughs> and he just re re it up again. <laughs> Nothing is over. <laughs> Nothing. Uh, favorite character in Office Space, so. Office space, okay. Is Mike Judge a genius? Question mark? Well, yeah, Beavis and Butthead was changed a, 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 a generation. You have King of the Hill, which rivaled The Simpsons in its in its diff, in such adjustment of comedy. Right. And Office Space, I think, is Mike Judge's only feature film, if I'm wrong. Uh, I was super, um, you know... I know you're going to ask background with the film, so I'll just say that I had never seen Office Space coming from corporate America for like two decades. People have been telling me I need to watch Office Space for a very long time. I never watched it because uh, I don't like comedies. And so Mike Judge's name pop up. I was stoked. <laughs> Stop <laughs> that laughing. Cool. Dude, yeah. Uh, Winner, what's your background with this movie? Oh, I remember watching it first on Netflix, like getting the DVD in the mail, and then buying the, uh, not wasn't the Blu-ray, it was just a regular DVD, and I I enjoyed it. I was probably in like eighth grade, but it still like thought it was funny. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I saw this on Skinamax back in the day. Uh, Skinamax. Skinamax. Wink. Uh, and this was before I, I knew the horrors of corporate America and in cu- cubicle life. So right. the uh-huh. jokes didn't hit hard for me because I was still a kid. <laughs> I just thought it was goofy and it was Mike Judge and it was funny. But it hit way harder, you know, after school and after college and going home from a cubicle job to watch this movie was haunting <laughs> it's like watching it's like watching looney tunes now as an adult versus watching it as a kid it's completely too the context is completely askew you know so i had a i i, I had an appreciation for the movie because i was such a bit i love i love beavis and butthead so right. i thought i was getting that with this movie and it's completely opposite you know this is oh thank god yeah it's highbrow comedy this movie it's i mean that we're calling the real life motion picture of beavis and butthead dumb and dumber aren't we <laughs> you know but beavis and butthead do america i saw that in the movies well i, I mean besides if we had to put like real life not animation like that would be the movie because yeah like Ooh, yeah I mean, it's beavis and butthead maybe. so you're telling me there's a chance <laughs> uh office space about a man who works a brain dead job with his TPS reports, who gets hypnotized to not give a shit and the hypnotism sticks and it changes his whole life. It changes his whole out- outlook on how we run as a society and thumbs its nose, so to speak at conventional uh, occupational anxieties. You know, this movie has a lot way more, a lot, way more to say than it leads on. You know what I mean? Uh, who would you who would you say is your favorite character winner out of this film? Uh, I like Jennifer Aniston's character <laughs> the most. Yeah, yeah. Uh, just just because uh, I've seen that type those type of workers before, and it's very spot on. Yeah, uh, with particularly with the scene that I chose. That's why I chose the scene. Uh, because it's actually a very real thing. Of, you're not wearing enough button. You're not wearing enough flair. You yeah. see Doug over there? He has a 27 distinct pieces of flair. Uh, that is a Disney thing. Right. That is a super Disney thing. Because when you work at Disneyland, you have to wear lanyards. And your lanyards are a reflection of your personality. And if you're not wearing a lanyard, how do people know that you're down with Disney? You're down with Is that Disney. a real thing? A hundred percent. You have oh. to wear a lanyard, and, you, oh. and, they, and they make you pick ten lanyards for free that that oh. that are direct reflections of your personality. I don't want to wear a lanyard. What do you mean you don't want to wear a lanyard? You see Doug over there? <laughs> he has on he has seventy five buttons on his lanyard, Doug. You see you see him, Doug. 
Yeah, Doug, um, he made a uh, top greeter of the year. And it's a picture of him. You know, you remember in uh, Hot Fuzz where Timothy Dalton's smiling? And it's a picture of Timothy Dalton smiling behind him. Yeah. You know, that silly picture is awesome. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> that guy was at Disneyland. He's just like, yeah, Mike, uh, you can't have your beard. Uh, we need you to have more pins. Have you picked out your pins yet? Hey, no. man. The plight of corporate America. Oh, God. <laughs> Bring I mean, shivers up my spine. Doug. I'm I'm doing everything I can to bite my tongue, just to not spin this all out completely into something completely strange and weird, and it turns into MOTN business, <laughs> business <laughs> politics. <laughs> you know, uh, like when you talk about favorite characters and that being relatable, like I have to go with Peter because it's. I mean, who hasn't been there? man right who hasn't been there there are any of us working age that means like 14 could be younger 14 you to 40 are. dog you know what i mean <laughs> we have all infinity. sat there and been like oh my god, god what am i doing oh my god what am i oh doing and you know uh, that opening scene in the traffic man Dude, it just, I know we're living in Coronaville right now, but I, I, my stomach like seized up. I'm like, oh God. In laughter? I don't want to deal with it. Um, (laughs) You know, in laughter, no. (laughs) No, no, no. But uh, in, in, I, I. Cringe. Ironically, ironically, yes. It's rough. Did Mike Judge direct Idiocracy? Yes. Okay, I just want to make sure. I thought I was. I, I was going to mention that uh, later. That um, ag- again, Idiocracy is one of those movies that has like polar opinions. I would say mm-hmm. Mike Judge does have uh, an effect on him, where like I I don't think I've met someone who kind of goes eh, about King of the Hill. It's either that show sucks or that's a great show that that is like very ground. It's brilliant. Yeah, well, it's, it's groundbreaking brilliant. in that it it shows like a age, like a character's learning each week, a type mm-hmm. of type of thing where Bobby doesn't make the same stupid mistake until later on in the in the series where Mike Judge kind of leaves. But uh, and then Idiocracy, it, it, there's a polar where people go, "This movie is stupid." And people go, "I know, that's the point." That's the whole point. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there's also another film that he filmed that that I haven't watched, but of course there's polar opinions about it. Most appointing, uh, it's called Extract. It has uh, um, Jason Bateman in it, mm-hmm. and like, and just with some of the re- critical responses I'm reading, the most disappointing American comedy of the decade, and so on. Put, and someone else went the funniest American comedy of the summer. <laughs> I'm going to say something controversial, and I don't know if it's stupid or not. Here you go. Here you go. Hot, take. hot takes. Is Mike Judge just the David Cronenberg of comedy? <laughs> or it's it's almost too wet. Like the 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 satire he's giving us, it's almost I too think... wet. You know, it's I... too real. It, and look, it actually look. hurts. You know? This is a comedy podcast, so I don't want to go too far from right. down 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 this road. It's an interesting question, though. But when I think about what I just saw in Office Space, my first time, when I think about Beavis and Butthead and everything that you just reiterated, Winter, I think to myself, you know, there are people in each one of those environments that are like, oh, no, this is totally cool. And there are people that are like, dude, this, how are you cool with what's going on right now? Mm-hmm. I mean, and I think that's where the divide comes out. So for office space, dude, there are people totally in the office that are like hunky dory, whatever, whistling to themselves in the pit of hell. And, and the and- thing is, I've seen people <laughs> defend the character of Lumber, who was literally the Darth Vader of the office space world and if you defend lumberg guess what you're lumberg <laughs> if you def- and I've, I've heard people defend now lumberg he was doing his job man you know these people aren't doing what they're supposed to be doing it's you corporate got- america it's corporate america bro <laughs> you got to get with the program my dude and i'm like you're lumberg you son of a bitch like i can't with you dude and- i like that 
that, that, that could be a t-shirt. You are if, Lumberg, you son of a bitch. Yeah, right. No, if if you agree with Lumberg, you are Lumberg. You are Lumberg. <laughs> and that God. is literally a Cerberus head that's leaning over your cubicle, making sure that you're getting your full your four four your full four hundred calls a day. So uh we were we were eyeing you. It's about forty five minutes in. You're running a little early. You know, you're running a little you're too early to work. You know, we need you to be on time. That means that means you got to be in on at nine, not at nine four, not at eight forty five. You see that for fifteen minutes? That's company money, right? It, it just gets right under your skin, <laughs> and people are still relating like movies like Idiocracy to where we live now. You know what I mean? Uh, to where we are now. It's yeah. scary. It's it's eerily <laughs> accurate, and I think that's why I call. Mike Judge, the uh, the Cronenberg of comedy, is because he just gets right under your skin, and you don't, and either, you, and your natural reaction is, I love it, I want more. He's so smart, or this is so stupid. Why do why is this funny, mm-hmm. right? Because he's rubbing you the wrong way. He rubs people the wrong way, <laughs> you know. Yeah. And if you're, there's if, a lot of folks who was in Texas that were super offended by King of the Hill. Yeah, King of the Hill was super offended by King of the Hill. The King of the Hill is super funny. Yeah, it's super funny and it lasted for what, like ten plus seasons. Yeah, you know? and it and it actually ended. It had it had a beginning, middle, and end. Man, not not a lot of American sitcom comedies do that. Although they need to bring King of the Hill back. Well, I, you know when we talk about Office Space, and I think to myself, you know, all right, Brian. Uh, did I laugh? I think when they beat the crap out of the copy machine, I actually laughed. That's the part, man. There too. And I, I, you guys can tell me. We've all seen that scene. Did that scene in other movies come first, or is that the first? And Because it's my That's first tough. time doing it. You know what I mean? So I'm looking at the scene and I'm like, oh, well, is this what makes all the other scenes for the next two decades like this that I see? I mean, even American Dad has a little scene like that that they do. No, that and is a highly you know what I mean? guy. Yeah, it's family a family guy. Yeah, it's a highly satirized scene, you know. With the bird song. Right, so yeah. I don't, I don't know. I was gonna ask. Do you guys know? It's a play on previous scenes, but that okay. particular setup is was birthed from, uh, I want to say, Office Space. Okay, that's interesting. Yeah, interesting. Um, I will say the downside to both these films, and we'll get into BHC in a minute. But um, I, I just coined the phrase "their kids." <laughs> I was like, "What? What is that? Is that like a uh, drug hitting the rave scene?" Uh, at any rate, both these films could today could have been done in an hour or even like forty five minutes. You you think about something like Game of Thrones and everything mm-hmm. they put in an hour or forty, fifty five minute episode, whatever it is, it's like, you know, this this is lasting long. Yeah. These ideas aren't necessarily Iliads. You know what yeah. I mean? Well here's the thing. Very, I would say you know I would I think we could say that Mike Judge um, I think that's part of his style, where you're not being hit with uh, co- with like a joke, like rat a tat, rat a tat, like a Family Guy type thing, or or contemporary comedies. He he like says a joke and it like kind of breathes, like he it's like pouring a fine wine, pours it into yeah. a glass, let let it aerate. His his, then, his jokes aren't playing the drums. The they're, yeah. they're like, his jokes are like playing the violin. Yeah. Right. It's very long, and they drag, and mm-hmm. it's one joke told over a thirty-minute episode. Now, right? Brian, do you have a, an illustration for what Mike uh, Judge's jokes are like? I mean, it's just not an illustration. It's just oh. dry humor, and you know, you either get it or you kind of don't. Yeah. Like Butthead, it took me a long time to get Beavis yeah. and Butthead, but as I got older, I understood Beavis and Butthead, and we'll go into those reasons in a different podcast. <laughs> um, you know, it, it just takes a minute, and you know, I think I don't know if we have that on tape uh, or we recorded that. When you said is Mike Judd a genius, and it's like uh, I don't know, I don't know. Question mark? Question mark, dude. Maybe. That's, like maybe think about his stuff. It has lasted. The test of time, yeah. Of it, except whatever extract is or 
whatever you're talking about. Extract, and then he also tried to show the goods. But it's like he'll he'll have something successful, and then he'll do something else, and it won't be as successful. But then he'll come right back with something else, and it'll be, like, superb. Like, uh, he comes out with Extract. That's not good. And then uh, he comes out. He's the creator of uh, Mike Judge Presents Tales from the Tour Bus, which is an animated sh- series about – um, the first season was about country singers, about how like a, and like each one is like an animated telling stories of different singers, and then the second season was about funk. How many times have you seen Office Space, Mike? I've seen Office Space. I can count it on one hand. Maybe did four you laugh? Times. Not the first time. <laughs> Office Space is like I, I laughed the third time, and then I stopped laughing when I actually had to work a corporate job, and then I laughed again. Almost cry laughing. Winter, <laughs> was... did you laugh? Yeah, oh, I think so. I mean, I liked. Uh, I thought the guy's uh, the guy with the stapler's voice was funny. Stapler, <laughs> no yes. salt on my margarita. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then my favorite part is like, what is it that you exactly do around here? Oh, the exit <laughs> interview. Yeah, oh, my goodness, it's brutal. It's so brutal. It's like, yeah, we've we've been actually. Uh, this guy's been fired for years, but we, we've been giving him paychecks. Okay, what do we do? We just stop paying him. <laughs> All I could do is shake my head, and that was <sighs> like, but that's some shit that would happen, man. Pardon yeah. my French. And again, not trying to be Mr. Negative, but again, like, like this movie, and I can see why people are like, Brian, you really need to watch this movie, because I've been spouting about like this movie, and I'm sure I'm not the only one, but I've never seen it. So as I was seeing it, I was like, oh, yeah, I feel completely validated. And everyone else feels like I do. But no one wants to say it. And no one wants to be Peter. And I was like, you know what? At this late stage of the game of, and I'm calling it late being, you know, just late in, in career terms. We've been working a while now. You know yep. what I mean? Mm-hmm. Uh, like, I'm like, yeah, this isn't really funny. This is kind of what's wrong. A hundred percent. And that's what I'm saying. It's so, you know, it hit a different chord with me as I was watching it, but I will say that I laughed twice and I smiled for a good portion of it. It's, so. I, and I'll, and I'll go into our masterpiece theater saying this is that this movie hits the funny bone, but yeah. the funny bone always hurts. <laughs> no. Nice, nice. <laughs> Whenever you see a good stand-up comedian, they're saying something that someone does not like no. somewhere. Somewhere. <laughs> you you're laughing else at? is laughing. <laughs> while, while they're laughing, you're literally looking into your drink. Salty as hell. Like, no offense. <laughs> if you haven't seen Chris Rock, e. <laughs> we don't we don't talk about him. On you do. All right. All right. He's Come banished on. from the Nerdiverse. He knows why. Well, uh, Jack City, but anyway, <laughs> Pookie, Pookie is not banned. Yeah, how do you Rock explain is. that? How do you explain that? <laughs> yeah, P- Pookie is not ba- Pookie is not banished from the Nerdiverse, but Chris Rock is. Doug. That's a different podcast. That's a whole different podcast. <laughs> he has a shrine up in like you know the Lamert Park of the Nerdiverse. Doug. Oh, dude, you guys ready to get into this masterpiece theater? Absolutely. We're gonna hit be, it. Hit it. We're gonna be reading an excerpt from Office Space. Uh, directed by Mike Judge. I will be the narrator and we will be starting off with our scene. Peter is saving a table and Joanna enters. Hi. Hey. I wonder if they will let me wear this in here. I think it'll be okay. Would you like to sit down? Okay. Wow, this place is really nice. Yeah, isn't it? Oh my god, compared to tchotchkes? I like the uniforms better anyways. I like yours. Nah. Peter looks at the buttons wearing on his suspenders. One says, we're not in Kansas anymore. The the one underneath says, poof. We're not in Kansas. We're not in Kansas anymore. Yeah, really. (laughs) It's on your. Oh, oh, that's a uh, that's a uh, my piece of the flare. What are pieces of flare? 
Yeah, all together. In scene. Scene. In scene. Very good. Very good. We're getting better, closer, warmer. This is the perfect segue. That's the snap. Because one movie that had tons of flair that had uh, nine, had 19, 1,984 pieces of flair was Martin Brest's 1984? Own. 1984. Okay. All right. Beverly Hills Cop. Starring Eddie I Murphy. I then. The heat is the the on. on. Man, this, music, this movie has some good music, didn't it? Dude, you know, memories of this movie are literally watching it in the 80s and then getting my uh, red, what was that, uh, red 89 Firebird with black T-tops and playing the cassette up and down uh, the little empty road that I lived on. <laughs> Love. <laughs> This soundtrack, man. You couldn't tell Brian soundtrack. nothing, Doug. He was no. Top, Doug. No, and, and at that stage, I mean, 84, I mean, I was like, that was almost 10, 12 years later, and I was still just rocking out. <laughs> Dude, nice, nice. I, 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 I just watched this movie a moment ago, and I forgot how electric, and like, it's almost unfair with anybody else in a scene with Eddie Murphy was back in the 80s. Because yeah, the guy just resonates charisma, you know? Uh-huh. The dude is just, he's electric, and he never stops. <laughs> you know, he never turns off. <laughs> and, and he's one of those actors like George Clooney, like Tommy Lee Jones, where he doesn't act, he's just Eddie Murphy. He's just Eddie Murphy. And as we were watching it, I was, during the we were watching it, as I was watching it, I was thinking to myself, I was like, you know, this is a prime example of them not like writing a movie around Eddie Murphy. They literally just took Eddie Murphy and dropped him in this movie. <laughs> They're yeah. like, okay, man. There you go. And roll. And roll. And that's what you got. You know what I mean? They didn't try for it to be funny or anything like that. That's just. Eddie, I'm sure those lines were dry as hell reading them on the script. But when you when you uh, flash that smile and you get that laugh, and it's like, oh, we're gonna keep that. Yeah, take it. I wonder how much of this movie was improvised. Uh, I think a lot. I Winter, what are your what are your thoughts on before I? Oh, I I I, I think a lot of it was improvised and like several takes like okay and like the type of thing where they're doing multiple shots at once or not at once but it's like uh, he'll say a line he's like okay let me try it again and he says it completely different um jessica some of the dialogue is like super smooth you know like it's snappy and it it's definitely like uh eddie murphy took the script and like you know let me just sprinkle a little bit of magic on it yeah I'm just going to adjust things here. I'm going to flip this there. You know. Okay, you guys ready? Ready? Okay, take. And there's some some scenes where they actually keep up with him. Like, I think Judge Reinhold is a very good foil to Eddie Murphy in this movie because he's so... Fantastic. He's so, he's so ditzy in his own little way. He's so good. He's, so, he's like Launchpad McQuack. You know what I mean? He's just... <laughs> that's a deep pull, but he's just so along for the ride. You know what I mean? He's not he's he's not antagonistic, and he's not with Eddie Murphy. He's just kind of floating around. You're like like a balloon on a wind, dude. Yeah. As I rewatch the film, and I'm not, you know, I can go into it about like action movies as a whole, but this to me strikes me as this. And when it came up, I was like, comedy. Really? I'm like, is that because of Eddie Murphy? Really? It doesn't strike me as a movie they wrote to be a comedy. It no. strikes me as I an see. action movie that they wrote that wound up being a comedy. Because you injected I like that. Eddie Murphy into it. Well, you know, Eddie Murphy, however, however the magic ended up happening, you can look at the final. You know what I mean? We talked about Ghostbusters, Giant Marshmallow. 
there was no giant marshmallow in this. You know what I mean? There was real fun, like, oh, here, we're trying to make you laugh. This was trying to be a 80s cop movie that, you know, I'm not sure the years on Lethal Weapon and things like that, but was sitting in that genre. And because of Eddie, it was funny. It's it's interesting. Yeah. Do you think the 80s are like uh, the beginning of the action comedies? Yes. Okay. Action comedy, because the 80s were the beginning of action in general. The 70s, 80s, because you have black exploitation, exploitation films, yeah. which were I mean, kind of creating where did that Dirty genre. Harry come out? Oh, I guess Dirty yeah. Harry more of a detective. That's what I was and Thank you. I was actually going to say, you just drop Clint Eastwood into this exact same role, exact same plot. It's just Dirty yeah. Harry. Well, you. Can, I would love. I would love to see Clint Eastwood say the exact same lines as Eddie Murphy. I put a banana in your tailpipe. No, 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 no. I'm talking other other dialogue. That's being- well. That's Eddie Murphy freestyling because <laughs> yeah. certain people can't be allowed in the in the Los Angeles Drake Hotel. Uh, you know, I would love to see Clint Eastwood. That's- Dirty <laughs> just drop them in you know and you make a good point brian that you know is this a, it's just a comedy or is this an action with the veil of comedy on it and it made me think of the blues brothers is the blues brothers action kind of comedy uh, comedy is that it a comedy something... is it a musical dude well uh yeah. i can actually give you a <laughs> i put you if you if you had to go one i put some musical over there a comedy. I mean, it's the Blues Brothers. They were on Saturday Night Live, but they're yeah. singing and dancing up and down that movie. And it's fantastic. fantastic. That's a movie I would love to do. Like, Aretha if Franklin had a whole it, scene. You know? Uh, oh, God, it's so good. <laughs> anyway, All right. Beverly on. Hills Cop, man. Uh, very in, very short story about Eddie, Eddie Murphy has, has a buddy. He's not a partner. He's just a kid. He grew up in the, grew up around in the mean streets of Detroit, because this movie gives you a very juxtaposition between Detroit life and Los Angeles life. You know what I mean? This movie starts with Eddie Murphy doing a, a bust, and it's very, like you say, it's very actiony. You can add any '80s action hero in this role; it just completely changes the the vibe of the film. Correct. And they sent him to sanitized, uptight Los Angeles, right? <laughs> you know. Where uh, where a, a cup of water is twenty five dollars, and you know all the cops do it by the book, but not Eddie Murphy because, but you know, can I say that is something I did find funny is how squeaky clean they made the Beverly Hills Police Department looks that look. And hey, look, look, I am not throwing stones. All right, any uh, cops watching this? Thank you for what you do. This, that, and the other, but. There is no police department. It, there's no organization in the world that's trying to do it by the book like that. And I just think that when I look at this movie from a 2020 point of view, I was like, oh, this <laughs> is funny. <laughs> Dude, it's, it's, like, it's, it's demolition man levels of bullshit. Like, 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 <laughs> like no police, no humans act like this, dude. You so, know? You know, anyway, that's just my piece on it. Yeah, and I really think it was funny. Like, they had to have the hardest juxtaposition possible to make Eddie Murphy pop even harder, right? Right. You couldn't have anybody, like, going toe-for-toe with him on the yucks. He had to be the central focal point of laughs, and everyone was the the dry man, you know, was the uh, the straight man, so to speak. No one could joke with him because it it would dilute the the, the yucks that Eddie Murphy was doing. Second for second, you know what I mean. Uh, I think the the villain was a little tried. It was a very James Bondy villain. Yeah, you know, it was very you know lethal weapon diplomatic immunity. You know, but it of. was the eighties. That was that was the thing, man. Those were the villains, and you know, they quote unquote aren't the villains today. Anyway, moving on. Moving on. It's Thank very hard because <laughs> you realize this movie's in the 80s and you realize that there's certain parts that just haven't aged well. Certain depictions. You For know, sure. Say. For and sure. And that's just the product of the time. But that's no excuse. Oh, we, can't, we can't let, let this... I, f- I forgot about the lieutenant. Um, Captain... Uh, Inspector Todd, Gilbert Hill. Yes. Yeah. 
angry he, yelling lieutenant, Doug. Uh, as, as soon as the scene was coming up, I remembered it from a kid, and that dude just scared the shit out of me. His <laughs> voice just yelling at you, and you're like, oh, shoot. And, and, and Eddie's look on his face, he's like, man. This the bird is- from Aladdin. <laughs> Dude, he, so, he looked like he, he like he, oh, he, this dude would give you a whooping, right? He seriously, looked, he, this dude looked like he was just coming with a belt. Dog. Like I, I can't handle people who are that who are that cartoonishly aggressive. You know, I, I, I got mentally shut down. <laughs> <laughs> like I can't understand what you're. I telling. like that cartoonishly aggressive. Yeah, like cartoonishly <laughs> aggressive, dude. Like you're just screaming at me. My brain just shuts down. <laughs> I'm just staring through you at this point. I'm not even. Mm-hmm. My my fear and sadness have gone beyond the realms of human understanding. I'm just what? And then you have the Los Angeles lieutenant who's Dick Jones from Robocop. I've totally forgot that, dude. It's Dick Jones. I forget the actor's name. He gets thrown out of a window with super long arms. He plays the uh the lieutenant who's who 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 he's the first one to kind of warm up to Eddie Murphy's antics of any kind of real authority. He just starts to like you may have a point there, but you got garbage evidence, so this will never stand up in a court of law. And we do things by the book here in Los Angeles, P- LAPD, years before certain riots broke out. <laughs> yeah, Lieutenant Bagamel. Oh, jeez. That guy rules. I got to find Cox. out this. Ronnie Cox, that guy is awesome. He was he's my favorite character actors, dude. Uh, there's a lot of small little moments. Damon Wayans is in this movie, dude. Yeah. He has a bit part. Damon Wayans. You know, the Waynes brothers were slowly infiltrating Hollywood back then. You know, like... I mean, 88, we got a woman in color, didn't we? That's what I'm saying. You know, like... uh, Wait, Winter, you said you weren't even born for this movie? Nah. Yeah. My brain just... It's it's like... (laughs) Yeah, I wasn't even born yet. He was a a twinkle in Winter Senior's eye, dog. A twinkle. It was like, I feel um, like making love. And then Winter became a human being. Yeah, and surprisingly, this film hasn't been like in the list of things that my parents want to go, go like, oh, this was before your time. You should watch it. Like, we've watched Excalibur, Shockwaves, <laughs> and I always bring up. <laughs> Shockwave, Doug. Yeah, remember Shockwaves? No. no. Oh, well, <laughs> we don't have to go over it. That's fine. <laughs> I don't know. Like, Beverly Hills Cop and 48 Hours always ran together in my brain. As a kid, like the movies just intertwined, yeah. And I never, and I wasn't a Beverly Hills Cop kid. Like I didn't watch Beverly Hills Cop two, and I wasn't excited for Beverly Hills Cop three. But this, you know, this one was on with Coming to America and Trading Places back now, in the am, day. Am I wrong in thinking that they're making another Beverly Hills Cop? I was they about were... to ask, what do we think about Beverly Hills Cop four? Is that the one where it's like a new kid and they're passing the torch kind of thing? You know, they haven't really said they. Finally said it's supposed to be getting done. I mean, Lord knows if it happens now or not. It's yeah. a it's it's a intellectual property. It's a timeless tale. You know, they've been trying to do it for a long time, and BHC three was not good. That's that's the problem, isn't it? Like that's you, just the truth. <laughs> how do you solve a problem like Maria? Tooth. Right? Total tooth. Like, how do you revise a dead franchise? You know what I mean? Like. You need a lot of it money. It hasn't stopped them from trying. Let's put it that way. <laughs> it will never stop them. You know how many movies are like in development now? You're like, what? Why are you bringing that back, man? But uh, right. when, it, when there's an intellectual property that made some kind of money, there's always going to be people who want to use it. If you were going to cast Beverly Hills Cop, and of course, Eddie Murphy would have to be in as like uh, the protege or like... The mentor. We have, to, we have to get the guy. I know a guy who can help us. And, he's, <laughs> and then he like cuts to him. <laughs> I would get someone that's not. I would. I would get someone that, and it sounds weird. I would get someone that's not Eddie Murphy, like the most polar opposite to Eddie Murphy. So there's some kind of John Mulaney. <laughs> John Mulaney. I was just gonna say, I'll get someone that's maybe not black. <laughs> I just to mix things up. I would love to see this. I don't think this is a film that you can do today. True. As long as you don't name the non. African American character Axel Foley, you'll be fine. I just think that there's a lot of stuff in the eighties that that does not translate well today. Can you list them out for me? Sure. No, absolutely not, Winter. (laughs) Stop trying to bait me. Winter is now which 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 movie did you like better as the comedy? Before we get there, we have to do our scene. 
We have to do our masterpiece theater winner. We're gonna str- we're gonna strangle you, man, <laughs> with with hands unclouded by hate. So let's do our scene from Beverly Hills Cop. Let's go ahead and pull that that upper for your listening pleasure. Yes, Brian. By, by the way, Brian will be playing Axel, and I will be playing. The rest of the uh, uh, first cop and Jeffrey. Well, oh, okay. So you're saying that I'm playing the black guy and you're playing the white guy? Is that what you're saying? We can't even there pull this because we're there all black. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> we, can't, we can't even <laughs> pull this card. We're all, we're all black on this episode. Dude. Right, Brian's enough. playing the game. <laughs> play the game. Yeah, I'm fine playing this game. That's fine. <laughs> your games, you're not pulling me into. <laughs> <laughs> different <laughs> podcast, bro. Different podcast. You got too much fun. Beat it. All right, Axel. Wrong. Yeah, irregardless, everything you say is wrong. Everything. <laughs> so just don't say anything. What? <laughs> what? You, what's happening? What's happening? <laughs> Nothing. I'm just oh. giving you my my the stance on it. Okay. Okay. You start us off, Axel. Yes, sir. Hey. (laughs) Way to go, man. I don't understand. Jeffrey Friedman, a 28-year-old detective, jumps up from his desk and hurries towards Axel. If Jeffrey wasn't a friend, Axel probably would have shot him long ago. He's the classic nudge, and he never stops talking. Hey. Uh, uh... What? I don't have time. What? I don't have time for you today, Jeffrey. That's your line. That's your line. Oh, I'm lost, bro. No, I'm lost. I thought we said page 12, Axel Hay. Yeah, that's (laughs) how it starts, and we're doing the whole page. Yeah. Now, Jeffrey says... Todd's been looking for you all day. He's really pissed. Says this is your worst fuck up yet, but I think he's being unfair. Axel glances towards a glassed in office at the far end of the room. It's empty. He's not in. Yeah, I can see that, Jeffrey. I bet if you busted those guys, he wouldn't be so mad. But I heard you get got caught up haggling about the price of something or something. Two grand is too cheap for that stuff. They would have known I was a cop. Todd's gonna drill you a new asshole. That'll be the third asshole Todd's drill. (laughs) I'm not saying you did anything wrong. I'm just saying it would have been nice if you had made the bust. All together, in scene. (laughs) Scene. Can we get some snaps? In scene. Yeah. So we reached that time where we gotta we gotta stop talking well about these movies. It's gonna get real real quick, people. Office Space wins by far. Is that your that's your take, Winner? Hot take coming from Winter. Office Space for the win. Why? Office Space to me, I have a better connection with. Uh, I think it it is a timeless classic. With, while Beverly Hills does have some funny bits into it. It still um, shows its age. Um, we would, I would say, well, Office Space. There's like a lot going to it. Where part of it, part of the humor in my mind is because a lot, of, some of it is age now. Where to me, like I think it's funny that they're complaining about this printer when it's like, <laughs> <laughs> it's like just. You can, there's like most offices have like 20 other printers now, or like you can press a button and it will self fix or something. But uh, I, I, yeah, they still don't do that. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, going on, <laughs> you know, being a corporate guy for a long time, winner, and I know you haven't been around that long. <laughs> Planes. It's just like, dude, how can you how can you not get a copy? It's 2020. How can the copy machine still be breaking down? Shit. I guess the difference between our job what? is like, whatever. I can't actually can't. I probably shouldn't talk about my job. Never mind. 
No, I, I, I there's, submit. There's certain universal constants. The air is breathable, water is wet, Co- uh, copy machines and coffee machines will always be broken. Damn it, seriously. I'm going to go with Beverly Hills Cop on this one. Uh, I think Eddie Murphy's performance is too strong. It hits him in his prime. And the big difference between these two movies that is that Beverly Hills Cop made me laugh. We're talking comedies. Uh, there were the yucks. There were the jokes. Uh, it was a very uh, shallow film. I'm not going to say mm-hmm. that it wasn't. You know, it wore its plot on its sleeve. Office Space had a lot to say. That's a ton to say. We all know Dr. Doolittle is Eddie Murphy's uh, high point, but move up. <laughs> yeah, so Dr. Doolittle. Just... No, the Bonetti Professor was his uh, magnum opus. But I just I had more fun watching uh, Beverly Hills Cop and Office Space just reminded me of my current existential dread that I cannot, cannot escape. So I, I got to go with the move that that uh, gave me more laughs and made me, you know, was just a bit a funner movie altogether with the action scenes and the comedy. I got to go Beverly Hills Cop. I am really shocked that this is falling on me and I did not expect this to go this way at all. Yeah. I like the pressure. And here's what I'm going to say. I'll give you stapler. I don't stapler. enjoy laughing. Like I said, not a comedy guy. So for me, it's actually kind of easy for some of these because I can just keep keep count. I can just be like, oh, you know what? I laughed. Great. Because I, I do it so freaking rarely that it's like an event every time it actually happens. <laughs> so um, here is the deal. Office space, I laughed twice, as I said, and I smiled the whole way through. Beverly Hills Cop, I smiled the whole way through. I did not laugh one single time because that is not a comedy. And this being a random select of comedy films, if you're gathering up the family for some yucks, I'm going to go with Office Space. Ah, There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Hard hashtag hard cuts. Hard cuts. I can't argue with that. Uh... Even though I would probably put Beverly Hills Cop in front of, you know, Beverly Hills Cop may be more digestible for a family than Office Space would. Uh, maybe. Mm, that would be my only argument. Mm, you know, like, you know, as a kid, it was funny. But like I said, it's a completely different experience as an adult. Uh, but I can see your point. Office Space is the stronger film. Uh, no, actually, actually, I did not say that. I did not say that. I said for a comedy Fight! I'm picking Office Face, Office Space. I actually think both films. I think Office Space holds up better. They're both way too long. They both could have been done in an hour type of episode. Oh, if I have to go film over film, Beverly Hills Cop is by far the superior film because I mean, there's highs, lows, action, this, that, and the other, but. Comedy laughs. No, man, no. That's that's office space. That's Jennifer Aniston. Whoever Jennifer the Aniston. Never seen ever again, except for the dude from uh, Scrubs and the other dude, which it's, are great. It's working overtime. It's you know making sure those TPS reports are in triple kit. It's office space. It's office, office space. Hey, it's Jack. Space. It's just Chinatown office hey, space. Hey, Jack. <laughs> it's just Chinatown. Guys, this is round two. God. This Such is this is, is definitely round two. Office Space takes it, uh, and Beverly Hills Cop is banished to the Shadow Realm. This is why we need three people because there can always be that split decision maker. You know what I mean? Which makes our random selects that much is much more enticing. Uh, if what we're going to be doing during this episode is actually posting on Twitter at at M- Nerdiverse, where we will be doing a poll where you can let us know. If we actually made the right decision. Who won the last poll? Very good question. Uh, Ghostbusters won with a whopping 56% of the votes. A whopping? A whopping. (laughs) Whopping. Almost half. Almost. (laughs) A a, a gargantuan lead uh, (laughs) over um, Austin Powers. I guess people still have um, Mike Myers on the brain. I mean, it's Austin Powers, man. I said that that thing's a generational, like, that thing had movement. 
At any rate, so, so we're looking at Office Space versus Ghostbusters? That's going to be the breakdown for, the, for those two brackets. It's going to be Office Space versus Ghostbusters. Interesting. Mm. They're bringing out, you know, I'm, and, I will hold my opinions for that, and, for, that cha- for that fight. What is our next round? Yeah. Next round is going to be uh, Bill Murray's own Ghost uh, Groundhog's Day. Versus Alicia Silverstone's Clueless. Hard cuts. That's going to be a hard cut, man. Is it going to be a hard cut? You hard decide. Cuts. Actually, it is, I'm looking at this like little lineup we have going here. Things are going to get bloody. Things are going to get super bloody. <laughs> Blood They're going to get bloody, man. Blood I, will run the streets, and they will be shouting for help. And it's, I will say no. I will whisper no. Oh, you you got it. it it's <laughs> funny. I picked Office Space as my dark horse, and I I, I just right now like I voted against it. <laughs> but yeah, here we are. You know, no, hard well, you're, cuts, the, you're the guy who's betting against the horse that they have raised their yeah, time. Man. That's why I mean, the the Mike G bloodline is horrible gamblers. We never win. You're <laughs> the Pete Rose of this. I am. Oh, right. geez. Oh, please no. I did. I did finish it, so I, I did not say it. It, okay. didn't, it wasn't finished. It was not in the ether. Oh man, where can we find you, Brian? Uh, you can find me at at Brian J Wash on Twitter, and you can find me on eBay at Wash's Shop. Where can we find you, Winter? Well, you can find me on all your favorite social media apps under Trash Monk the Third. Does that include TikTok? No. Specifically, not TikTok. Uh, you can find us at Adam Nerdiverse on Twitter. Uh, that's where we do have all our fun. That's where we actually throw fruit punch into stands of people, and they're like blood, and they freak out. Um, you can also find us on any of your podcast outlets, from Spotify to Spreaker. You know, from SoundCloud to Apple Podcasts, we're all over the place. So, if this is your first time listening to this podcast, I'd like to say hello. And welcome you to the Nerdiverse. Uh, thank you, fellas, for joining me in this round two. Thanks for having me. Great time. Thank you. Absolutely. And we will always ask you uh, to look towards the skies. Look towards the skies. <laughs> <laughs>